Today we are making magic with a simple sheet pan. Well, this is just a prop. It's gonna be bigger than this, but you know what I'm trying to say. Hey everyone, it's Caitlin. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I make simple, accessible, and delicious vegan recipe and lifestyle content. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel and you like what you see, go ahead and click the little subscribe button right down there. We're there wherever to join in on the fun. Today we are making sheet pan meals. They're going to be vegan, they're going to be hearty, they're going to be delicious, but also kind of refreshing. We got two different takes on it. So let's start out with the more classic, I would say American inspired one. All right, so I'm going to show you how to make this vegan sheet pan barbecue with roasted vegetables. Honestly, the barbecue sauce, spice, and vegetable combination on this is so good, it reminds me of summer. We're going to start by adding some sweet potatoes to a large bowl, along with some chopped red cabbage and some corn. I'm using fresh corn, but you could also use frozen corn. Then we're going to add in some spices. Here I am using smoked paprika, cumin, cayenne, garlic, and salt. All of the recipe amounts are in the recipe that's on the blog, which will be linked in the description of this video. I'm also adding some avocado oil here to keep things nice and moist and also help them crisp up. You can use another high heat oil if you want. But you're just going to mix everything together and then once the spices are sort of evenly coated around everything, we're going to transfer all of these veggies to a sheet pan and just put them on around two thirds of the sheet pan um, because the soy curls are going to go on the other third. If you guys haven't tried roasted red cabbage before, it is so good and I really love it in this vegetable combination too. So now moving on to the soy curls, first thing we're going to do is put them in a bowl and then pour boiling water over them. So we want to rehydrate them for about five minutes or so. If you can't find soy curls, you can make this recipe with something else. My top suggestion would be tempeh or tofu. Tofu won't crisp up as much though, but you could also use something like jackfruit or mushrooms. So once the soy curls are rehydrated, you're going to drain them really, really well, press out as much liquid as you can, and then add them back into a bowl with a little more oil and barbecue sauce of your choice. I like using store-bought barbecue sauce if you make your own, gold star for you, I think that's awesome. I just personally am not that attached to any particular flavor, but if you have one that you love, you can totally use it here. So then we're going to transfer this to the other side of the sheet pan. I like to cook this separately because the vegetables have a lot of moisture in them, not separately, but you know, divide it on the pan. And this way the soy curls crisp up a lot more and adding the oil to the barbecue sauce also helps them to get a sort of juicier, meatier texture than just, you know, rehydrated soy. So we're going to pop this in the oven, bake it for 30 minutes. We're actually gonna bake it for 20, then mix it and bake it for another 10. But for simplicity's sake, here's what it looks like once it's done baking. And then we're going to take our remainder of our barbecue sauce and add it to the soy curls because they do dry out a little bit in the oven. So just coating it in another fourth cup of sauce, which is what I'm doing here, helps them stay nice and juicy and they also get nice and shiny. So at this point, if you wanted to, you can mix everything together. For aesthetic and photography steak, I kind of kept things separate. Um, if you don't want your barbecue sauce to touch your vegetables, you can keep it separate too. But either way, you're gonna top it with green onions. And then all that's left to do is serve and enjoy. I think you can totally serve this meal on its own. It has a great combination of protein from the soy curls, complex carbs from the sweet potatoes, and you also got some nice fiber, veggies, and color going on there. But if you did wanna stretch this out, you could also serve this over rice, or maybe even serve it with a wrap or in a sandwich too. So we tackled some easy breezy barbecue, and now we're going to move on and make a more French-inspired recipe. This is my very loose take of a sheet pan vegan nichois salad. So a little brief history moment here because it is important to acknowledge the history of our food. The nichois salad is originally from Nice, not nice, France. It is a very old salad and salad itself was originally made from raw tomatoes, eggs, tuna or anchovies, but not both, and an olive oil dressing. I think that's everything. Did I miss something? The salad has since become wildly popular and with popularity comes twists or bastardizations, but actually a French Michelin star chef did add in the addition of green beans and potatoes. Some French purists thought this was a blasphemy or sacrilege, but some accepted it. And since then, it's just gone all over the place. The real kicker with the salad though is that every ingredient is supposed to be cooked separately and then tossed separately in the dressing and then comprised separately on a plate. So it's like compartmentalized. Um, yeah, when I first did research on this, I was like, that's a lot of dang work for a salad. So since some French people are already offended, I figured we might as well go all the way and make a very loose take, make it vegan so there's no seafood or eggs 
And we're also gonna make it all on a sheet pan in the oven. So no, we're not gonna be sitting over a boiling pot of water. We're gonna be plopping things in the oven, plopping them on a plate, and just putting some dressing on top. Okay, so now let's get into this recipe. We're going to make this delicious, loose take on a nishwa salad. First, we're going to start by making some crispy chickpeas. So we'll add two cans of chickpeas to a bowl. If you really want them to get crispy, make sure you drain them and dry them well before you make this recipe. Then we'll add in some capers and season it with some salt and oil. You can really go by personal preference here. Then we're just going to mix everything together until it's evenly distributed and then transfer this to a sheet pan. We are going to be baking this alongside our potatoes first. So I'm just adding it to again around like two thirds ish of the pan and spreading it out. Again, this will help your chickpeas become a little crispier if they're not all piled on top of each other. So now we're going to do the exact same thing with some red potatoes. Red potatoes are typically used in nishwa salad. Usually they're smaller like fingerling potatoes, but if you can't get access to them, red potatoes will work or dare I say gold potatoes will work as well. I don't know, sue me, well don't sue me, but you know what I mean. So then we're going to add them to the sheet pan and then bake this in the oven. And then in the meantime, while those are crisping up, we'll just go ahead and make our dressing be a little productive here. We're going to add some lemon juice, extra virgin olive oil, Dijon mustard, some diced shallot and some fresh chives and thyme to a bowl along with a little pinch of salt and then just whisk until everything is emulsified. The dressing should become a brighter yellow color as you can see here and just go ahead and set that aside. Then we're going to use the same bowl, add in some haricot vert, which is thin French green beans, regular green beans will work in a pinch, along with some red radishes. And again, season that with salt and oil. I only need a little bit this time because there was some left over in the bottom of the bowl already. Then just mix everything up, make sure everything is nice and coated. And then once our potatoes and chickpeas come out of the oven, they should look a little bit something like this. The chickpeas will have crisped up the most. So we're gonna push those over to one side, then add in our green beans right in the center, spread them out a little bit so they too can get crispy. And then we're going to return this to the oven and bake it for another 13 to 15 minutes, depending on how well cooked you want your green beans to be. This was at about 13 minutes. I guess if you wanted them less cooked, you could do like 10 minutes, but now all of our things are roasted, so it's time to assemble. You wanna use like a large bowl or plate and typically the ingredients are served in segments. So here I'm adding in the roasted veggies and then we're also going to add some fresh tomatoes and olives and then we'll top it off with the crispy chickpeas and you can drizzle the dressing on top. I like to keep it off to the side a little bit too, just so people can sort of dress their own plates. And the great thing about the way this recipe is plated is that everyone can sort of grab a little bit of what they want. So if you want more chickpeas, go for it. If you don't like olives, don't grab those. And you can sort of make your own custom salad using the ingredients that are already there for you. So obviously this is not super traditional, but I think it's a really hearty, satisfying, but also still refreshing vegan twist. And I hope you love it. All right, friends, and that concludes this recipe video. Leave a comment down below and tell me which one of these two recipes was your favorite. I think they both have a proper time and place. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I haven't really done sheet pan meals before, so let me know if you wanna see more of those down in the comments. And as always, all the recipes are on my blog with images, so you can save them to Pinterest if you wanna make them later and not right at this very moment. So thank you all so much for your attention and time. And if you made it to the end of this video, you're a true MVP, because I know most of you just skip and look where there's food on the screen. So if you made it, you're a real one and I appreciate you. Have an awesome day slash rest of your life if we never see each other again. And I hope to virtually see you soon in a future recipe video. Bye.